Hey guys, thanks for joining us today on this video all about the new contrast and shade paints from Games Workshop. We've been very fortunate enough to get some in advance to have a go at them. Uh, you're going to be joining Ed and myself today to go over our experiences of using them, the models that we tried them out on and what we absolutely loved about them. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to find out loads of cool things about what's going to make them good for possibly adding them to your painting collection. Uh, so I'll see you guys back in a sec. So Ed, let's talk about some awesome new paint. I do like paint. Yes, very, very fond of it. Um, so <laughs> I very, don't quite very, drink it, but you know, it's no, quite... no. Well, as I say, I'm, unfortunately, I'm in the the, the brush licking camp, so I'm, undoubtedly I would have, uh, have have consumed a fair amount during my lifetime. So, so yeah. Um, but um, we're very, very fortunate to have the opportunity to try out and test out the uh, new contrast paints. Um, and also have a dabble with the new shade paints as well. Um, so we've we've both had the opportunity of painting uh, two models. Um, and uh, uh, prior to this, I was very lucky at the Heresy Weekend uh, getting a sort of secondary or another day with a lot of the other content creators to have a sort of hands-on go of them before this. So I've kind of had more than one attempt at this but uh but both times have been very very fun so one what, of the chosen few <laughs> uh, yeah i'm very 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 honored to, to get the opportunity to play with these awesome new colors um so so yeah really that's you know this this whole entire sort of podcast and, and vlog is all about them and uh there's some really really awesome things uh, to go over so uh so what are your sort of initial thoughts um i mean it kind of goes without saying like i love them i mean paint is paint so anytime i get to play with new colors it's going to be great you know, uh, we get asked about it on classes all the time. Do you use contrast paints? And the answer is always yes. You know, there's there's no reason not to, other than maybe if you're trying to do a fine edge highlight, yeah. they, they're not thick enough to be able to no. get an edge highlight. But, you know, you can use them for recess shading. You can use them for glazing. You can use them for flat colors. Um, you know, you can you can even use them for their intended, uh, intended use, which is making yeah. it easier to get um, a bit of volume on your model so that mm -hmm. you've got the darker to lighter transition over surfaces. You know, you can you can kind of use it for pretty much anything in in model painting. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah, they, they're really really uh, sort of uh, diverse in the uses of them, which I, I think in the initial uh, launch of them, I think they were really good for various different things. Um, but the the these new ones have, have, have really kind of for me like in, in trying them on the the, the times I've tried them um, have really kind of knocked me for six a little bit, uh, as in just sort of how, how good they are and what they can do, and then how sort of how saturated they are in the amount of pigment they've got. Um, yeah, yeah, their initial launch uh many many years ago uh really obviously designed for it was years people. ago bloody yeah, hell it was yeah it was a very long time ago. i know if it, well it feels like uh it feels like it's a lot a lot sooner but yeah it's actually quite a, quite a while ago um they're 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 genuinely you know the, the to get uh, paint on miniatures you know and get people playing with, with sort of painted miniatures which i think is a great sort of bedrock to start off with but they have yeah, so 100%. many they have so many more different um uh, sort of the uses and things you can do and then they're really really good for all types of painters as first and foremost which i think is something that that um like many things in life things have a stigma and i think that the, the one of the beautiful things about this is that they they surpass that and they're really good for for lots of different things um like you were saying for glazing for, for doing like the browns and black colors can be used for like oil streaks and grime and the greens and things like that for, for loads of different things you can use them for um so upon hearing that there, there's like a 2.0 release of, of, of contrast it's, it's 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 super interesting for me when i first heard about it and first sort of got got to have a play with them um and right from the get-go uh the 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 sheer sort of like rocket booster amount of of vibrancy, of, of vibrancy is just is just astronomical to start off with uh there's some some seriously good colors in there like that that really help uh in my personal opinion getting rid of stigma of painting certain colors which which we'll obviously go into in later on in in this sort of video um but yeah right from the get-go i was really impressed with them and uh and i think that um that the that, that like any good paint you know um it, it it can be used for certain tasks and it's also you know it's great for sort of tweaking things or boosting colors or putting things in like what what were some of the things you from testing them that you that you kind of like thought wow these are like or what were the things that really shocked you when you first tried these new ones um it uh, for me putting the magma droth orange on the model for the first time i was like oh my god it's just an orange paint like yeah. <laughs> this is insane the coverage on it was incredible um, yeah you know i kind of realistically only needed to do one and a half coats i did two anyway just to like make sure that everything across it was was super thick but like for such a vivid color it's so rare to be able to do that because for anyone watching who's not necessarily aware the brighter and more vivid a color or the more towards white a color is 
usually the worse its coverage is and often the thicker the paint because you have to have more pigment in it to get it that bit closer to white but this was i preferred the orange over the blue you know when i painted my one with the blue it took me a good a good few coats to get a solid color that i was looking for mm. whereas the orange was just like just straight away it was just it was beautiful <laughs> yeah so i i, I there, there's um so at the when i tried them just following the heresy weekend there that i done um a plague bearer with with the the magdor and, and it, the coverage was was insane i literally i could not believe how solid the coat went on and how vibrant and saturated the color was and and it's really funny like it didn't have the the properties of like the, putting that much uh of the sort of like the shadow effect but it was literally like a for me the orange was a lot a lot less of what i expected from yeah, the contrast yeah. paint um, yeah. personally though i think i personally prefer that in a brighter color yeah um, because I'd always on on such a vivid color, I'd personally prefer to paint the shadows in if I'm going to do it. Yeah, just from it's, my it's, process. Yeah, hundred percent right. So it's always so easier to add shadow. It's insane. Yeah, it's it's brilliant. Like absolutely amazing. And and like I I think out of all the colors that I tried from the new range, I think there's one or two, I'd say one or two that for me were not only shocking as in how good that they were, but just like instantly become like staple uh, for me Imperial in my painting. Fist, yellow yeah it was awesome yeah, it's good it's i didn't good... i didn't up any didn't end up using any on the model i've painted but um i did a few sneaky testers as well <laughs> um it is it's really really nice yeah it's it's good i think we, we just got to jump back really quickly to probably one of the most important things with this new release of the, of the contrast which is the, the brand new white scar rattle can or spray can because i remember back in the day when we we had skull white as a spray <laughs> can and uh, don't get me wrong, you know, back in the day, the, the, the sort of the advancement in sort of, I say technology, but in sort of science and the way that the paints were formulated was was nowhere near what it is now. But Skull White had a little bit of a reputation of, of being a little bit sort of temperamental in sort of with moisture or, or you yeah. know, for example. Could... But it, again, it comes back to what we just said about pigmentation and paint. Like white spray rattle cans are always, yeah. are often more temperamental because you have to get more substance in the spray to get that white color you've got more pigment in which means you yeah. have to balance it differently and um, with the accelerant and the medium and everything so it's it's why it's such a pain for them yeah well I, i'll tell you what when when i tried the white scar and, and you know i think i sent you the video as well like that i i wanted to give it a full-on proper test just to see how how number one how good the coverage is and number two how good the finish quality is because i think with any any spray can their thing they are two things which are really fundamental to deciding uh, am i going to sort of prime with an airbrush or am i going to base coat the, the rattle can or whatever the case may be um so i primed the model black to start off with and then went over it with the white scar and 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 quite frankly he's a maniac yeah, quite frankly i could not believe how good um not only it performed but just how well the the the, the overall coat was once it had, it, had, it had gone on the miniature um and bear in mind this is this is obviously uh, essentially a primer for them what you do with with obviously the contrast paints um but it's phenomenal just for getting a white white base coat so if you yeah. wanted to undercoat your models black and then you know or you didn't have any other color to undercoat like a gray or something and you, this this can 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 do the work and put the put the graft in to get that vibe. how how do you think it would act using it as i know obviously people talk a lot about if you don't have an airbrush and you're wanting to do a, like a, a, a easy zenithal as it were by replacing the airbrush with a rattle can how do you think it would perform? Did you try it at all, or was it just I, a full cut that you went for? I didn't try like as like in the in the early like the early couple of passes I did with the can. It kind of had that effect on on the on the miniature, uh, and and maybe I should have done like a bit of a test of of if that's something maybe I've overlooked. But but the the, the you could easily get obviously nowhere near the control that you will have with an airbrush but you can get a very very good zenithal uh sort of uh, highlighting technique and transition on a miniature with the white scar over a black or yeah. chaos, chaos black it's just you know it's, it's such a popular technique particularly for heresy and with yeah. that haven't come out recently you know combining uh, uh, uh two rattle can zenithal and some contrast is a great way of getting yeah that uh, that heresy look that yeah. people have been doing for years so that brings us on to um uh, that we obviously done two models for for this uh, sort of test and try out of the new colors and i I think that you know um, we both approached it from from an internal thing that we do as a business which is obviously painting a space marine you know it's, it's something that we obviously i love space uh, marines yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's um, not to love exactly they've got guns uh, they've got swords they've got big power fists you know exactly helmets you, you don't have to paint the skin 
<laughs> yeah, you'll be pleased to know um, the acorn didn't fall far from the tree this time, and I still went with uh, a son of Baal, but not the stereotypical, oh. you know. So, we'll, so uh, we'll move you on at some point, yeah, exactly. just to try so, something different. Exactly. Can I interest you in the most interesting of chapters, the Ultramarines? No, you can't. Um, yeah, I would always be a son of Baal. Um, so, so let's talk about your model first, because because um, I, I can obviously talk about mine, and I don't want to. I don't want to bore people about it too early cool. on. Yeah. So, um, so, so you went for a really cool, cool scheme. I think you wanted to push the... the yeah, I wanted to try a few different things. And what I was aiming for actually changed slightly as the process went on. So, you know, I wanted to do a split colour scheme because, you know, it's not that it requires a huge amount of precision. You know, you can do it by hand without taping anything or marking anything out relatively easily. But my experience with contrast paints obviously have been that they're very thin, they flow really quickly, and on a smooth surface, they move. So I wanted to see how easy it was to just get a relatively simple split i was thinking about doing quartered and i was just like no no it's a test let's not be let's not be stupid let's just do something that's like it's actually going to be feasible to, yeah. to look at um and i was originally thinking that for both sides i was going to try and go for what we might expect more from a contrast look which is having that using the contrast paint to set your volumes in place mm -hmm. with your darker recesses and your brighter um, areas where the, the paint hasn't covered as much on like the, the upper area of a, of a sphere, for example. The orange went on so well um, that I immediately was just like, well, two coats this, I'm going to have a solid finish. Um, so I was like, well, I'll, I'll probably do the same with the blue then so that it doesn't stand out too much in comparison. Um, and then the blue wasn't as dark as I expected. It was, it, so it was Magma Droth Orange for the one side and then it's Azuman Blue for the other side. Um, and it was so much more of that really, really like nice pale blue and then dark recess. I was just like, well, this just looks radically out of place next to the orange. So I did have to do, I think it was like six or seven coats to build up the blue. Because again, I didn't want to just splurge over the model. You know, you can always add more paint. You can't take it away. Mm -hmm. So I did keep it thin and build up the layers. Um, then I was like, awesome. This was incredible. What other colors can I use on this? And I was like, well, I've got an orange side. I did plan like the orange side next to the blades so that I could put green next to the orange mm -hmm. and it works slightly better. So the green was then two new contrast paints. And I also wanted to try out an old paint to see how they work together. So that was, uh, the old one was warp lightning for my darkest green. Um, and then I used striking scorpion and Carandras. striking scorpion as my brightest and Carandras as my mid tone. And I glazed between the three, which mm -hmm. was really nice. They, it worked really well. Again, I did have to build up how solid that base color was. So it did take a few coats rather than just relying on, on the sort of like the contrast effect. Um, and because I'd done some glazing on there, I wanted to see if you could do a very simple lens. I just painted the rim of the, like the out, the, the whole lens black. And then leaving a black outer rim, I painted a uh, gray sear back in the middle and then just put contrast over the top. So I just put some um, Carandras green over the top of that to see what one coat would look like with a forced dark area and a forced brighter area. I think that was kind of cool. Then on the bolter, I tried out, I really wanted Doomfire Magenta. It looks so cool in the pot. It's like this really <laughs> vibrant, like ready pinky purple color. Um, and I just whacked it on that and on the hilt. And I think, um, you know, I went for a more solid finish on the bolter casing and then a much thinner finish on the hilt just to have two different styles. And the hilt, I think, shows really well, like in the, in the painting process. Um, and when it's finished, actually, sort of like that dark versus light next to it of where it has gone thick or thin. Whereas, again, the casing, I just tried to go for a slightly thicker finish. Um, but I actually tried out uh, the new shades as well. Um, so I tried out, uh, two, I went with Drakenhof Nightshade and, um, Drucci Violet. And I was originally going to use the Drakenhof Nightshade and see how it performed because it's a really deep blue over the blue. The blue itself was already a little bit too dark, so it didn't show up too well. Um, so I actually ended up using another model. Mm -hmm. And while it's not going to be shown here, my favorite thing about the Drakenhof Nightshade is that in the past, I've had some issues where if I've thinned it down a little bit too much, it started to go a little bit white where the chalkiness from my water started to affect it too much. Whereas the models I tested on didn't have that at all. Yeah. Same with the Drucci Violet on, I use that as the recess shade for every single color on this model. Um, for the golds, the orange, blue, the red, um, everywhere that could have a recess shade had the violet put on. And it was such a nice, um, it was such a nice finish to it. It flowed really well. It thinned out really well without any issues. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really liked it. Um, it was really easy to glaze with again um, without sort of going um, to sort of like matte or um, 
or, or pigmenty and leaving like a white residue behind. No, it looks great. Honestly, like you, you absolutely killed it. It looks brilliant. Yeah. Um, I threw on some old Forge World weathering powders onto the base just to make yeah, it yeah. a little bit dirty and mat down the legs around the bottom. Yeah, looks brilliant. Like, and the half and half scheme works really well. Like, what, what was your favourite out of all the paints that you tried for and that you've tested and bits and bobs from the new range? What's your favourite one? Uh, probably striking scorpion green. It's it's so magma droth for how nicely it covers in one coat, but that striking scorpion green is so bright. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's awesome. vibrant. Yeah, it's yeah. very very vibrant. Um, yeah, I was super impressed with with uh, them when I, I obviously we split the colours to obviously do this exercise and do this test for this for this show. And um, I would have and, liked to try out the ball red maybe, but you know, I'm sorry because it's ball in the name. I wasn't allowed. It's here. I'm sorry. I've got it right here. I've got them in front of me so I can remember <laughs> names because I was trying to remember all the names and it's like there's so many corny colours and corny names that I just couldn't remember every all of them. So I've got them here just to to show, remind me. Um, but yeah, I think I think you, you smashed it, mate. They look, they look, it was brilliant and. Um, yeah, and much. yeah, like the, the 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 greens, you're quite right. Like I tested out um, uh, Mantis Warriors green uh, over the white scar um, for orc skin. I yeah. can honestly say for really quick, instant, amazing orc orc flesh, Mantis Warrior green over a, over a white scar spray can is is incredible. Yeah. Like it's just phenomenal. Like and the coverage is great. It, you know the control of the, of the pigmentation, the control of the flow is is really good. So that sword, when I saw it, I the model in, in the flesh, yeah, the sword's great, and you, you've done a great job with with all those different colours you've used on it. Um, so on reflection from your half and half scheme, um, as I mentioned, I didn't fall too far from the tree this time, and I went for something. I went for something that I, I wanted to combine a bit of a test, like between um, obviously uh, using some colours from from the new range that um, I. I'd heard that are going to be really, really good and like really game changing. Um, and obviously yellow is a notorious color for being, uh, for being a bit of a pain to, to, to get right or to get smooth or to get, you know, uh, just really nice saturated yellow. Um, and in the new, uh, release of the contrast paints, there's, there's actually three. So you've got the quite one, you mentioned the Imperial fist, which you, obviously you had in the half that we split. And then I, I had the, uh, the, the bad moon yellow and then the iron jaws yellow as well. Um, I've, I've not seen those two. I'm assuming the Iron Jaws is a lot more desaturated. So, yeah, so then... you've, you've got the Bad Moon Yellow here. I'll put these here. And then you've got the you've got the Iron Jaws in, uh, over here. Uh, here, sorry. So um, it's, again, a little bit more desaturated, not as vibrant as you can see. So what I actually uh, I decided to do is do... Um, do a Lamenta Space Marine. Um, so the reason for that is because I just thought it'd be really good to use the yellow. Uh, and uh, I, I, whereas you've gone with brushes, I wanted to see, because I've heard good things about contrast paints. I've never used contrast through an airbrush previously. That's so with the, with the, with the increased, um, with the increased saturation and, and just the way that, that they, they behave. And I have tested all the colors with a brush and I've tested a few with the airbrush. Um, honestly, Bad Moon Yellow covers Inc like it's like the magma droth it's just i've never seen a yellow paint or a bit of contrast bit a normal acrylic paint i've never seen a yellow paint cover like this before um i think i think one of the important things to mention there is like um one of the things we're talking about when we say seeing a yellow cover obviously over white yellow is relatively easy to get over it but one of the big issues you come across with is staining where when the yellow starts to dry and you then try and put like finish the rest of a section of a model yeah you'll end up with where it's it's met you'll just get like a longer streaky line where the two sides overlapped and dried which doesn't happen as much with these yellows yeah that on, on, like with a brush or with an airbrush this thing covers like bad moon yellow covers like i've never seen it and and when I tr I tried it initially, just at the heresy uh, the day after the heresy event, when I when I tried it, um, I, I I literally thought this is going to be game changing for so many people that collect Imperial Fists or that want to paint you know yellow yeah. yellow miniatures yellow bit whatever the case may be. If they, if they found yellow difficult, then this thing is like is is going to blow their minds, you know. And um, so so what I've done with my space means, I literally uh, rattle canned it with the, the white scar over the black. Um, I then shot it with uh, iron jaws uh, from below uh, and just really some of the mid sections and left the top with that white still. And then just got the bad moon yellow directly from above uh, and then and just sort of a, a layered it down to meet in the mid section, basically. So it's slightly darker. Yeah. And the two colors, even though in the pot, they're quite different tonally. Uh, when they're on the miniature, they do go together quite nicely. It's really nice and subtle. Is um, it um, dawn yellow or phalanx yellow you've used to highlight? Uh, I used uh, Dawn, so I used Dawn Yellow to highlight. So, so, uh, so I used Dawn Yellow to, to highlight the the miniature, um, and I found the Dawn Yellow quite quite desaturated to the Bad Moon being. Yeah, it really I, is. Yeah. I, I literally, it's like I was trying to, I was starting to do the edges, and I was like, 
this thing's disappearing into the cut because it's, like, it's, just, it's just the color of like cream and you just the, don't the, expect it from a yellow it doesn't look it in yeah. the pot but then it comes out so so hot. like it's basically just off white yeah um yeah. so yeah I, I did a bit of i wanted to just it was a real test to see what the colors are capable of doing but from from testing sort of like the the whole range of things like i think for me some of the standout colors personally but like i said mantis warriors green bad moon yellow if you if you're a son of dawn or you want to paint bad moon orcs then obviously it's named appropriately but um the yellow is is absolutely phenomenal and uh and i think there's some really other cool colors as well that that just uh, that have been needed in the range i think to just to really extend. i think there's four yellows now in there or four or five yellows now in the actual yeah. contrast range which is which is uh really really phenomenal it's big it's it's a color that has because it's so pale and it's so hard to get smooth yeah and to not like tea stain as i said with like accidentally like missing a bit and having to go back in and hope that the layers mesh nicely rather than uh rather than leaving like rings everywhere yeah yeah um, it's such a nice series of colors particularly with things that are more vibrant yep um, to help people get over that, maybe the fear of trying something new to start with, mm-hmm. um, or the fear of like you know helping people try something more than they've done before. What for you is like the standout thing? What things for you I think are going to be real sort of important for people using these? Um, I hope people push themselves to use them in more ways. Um, I guess most of what I've seen in the past is you know like the the one thick coat, um, and it does work. No, it's a very, very quick way of getting things on miniatures. But as I had, and as you've touched on, um, when we talk in classes for people about not wanting to try things, the fear of trying something new often holds you back mm-hmm. when you'd be perfectly able to do the thing you're afraid of painting. Yeah. But being afraid of it is what then causes a mistake for you. Yeah. I hope that with, like, now with the, the older and the newer contrast paints, having such a breadth of color allows you to try loads of different things you can try your desaturated sort of like dirtier armies with camos like the greens and the browns and everything that existed before now you can try your vibrant um uh your vibrant imperial fists um you know we've got more colors like the greens and some of the turquoises that existed in the first set were really really nice yeah, yeah. i'm hoping that like you know with with the new ones we'll see like um more um kind of like cool looking scaled creatures because i think with scales particularly in like age of sigma with the amount of textures that there are on models they will look insane over a lot of things yeah um you know and I, whenever i'm at an event and i'm looking at people's armies if they're done with contrast they've previously a lot of the time been either the same few teals for that look and that finish that the contrast gives or they've been sort of a darker color from contrast yeah. There's not, they've not, there's not been many that have been super, super bright. And I'm hoping, no, no. I want to, I want to go out and I want to see some vivid armies. I want to see a vivid pink tower army. With, the, with that, the, the, one of the new colors, that, that magenta, I think that. Uh, yeah. It's, that it's, is it's such a, be. a bold color. <laughs> <laughs> I want to yeah, see pictures. I want people to tag me in it. I want to see pictures of people using that magenta on everything. Yeah yeah good yeah I, the, uh, and from my side the the rattle can is incredible like literally if you do if you if you take one thing away from this the days of, of being worried about using white rattle can are gone and uh yellow is now completely fixed in the way of doing it you just need bad moon yellow um one coat and it literally covers in one coat. i couldn't i could not believe it how good it is like it's yeah what we need to do next is we need to try out doing a pre-shade with contrast yeah so we need to try out uh this is for yellows Spray the model white, get that magenta. You see, you see where I'm going with this. Yeah. Get the magenta and do like uh, uh, like a base shadow layer with it yeah. with the airbrush. Yeah. Then wrap it with one of the yellows. Yeah. Because that often gets you a really nice um, shadowed look. With yeah. Putting yellow over pink. So I yeah. want to see what it looks like. I'm just obsessed with the magenta. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do that as a future future episode. But um, but yeah, but it's been great to to obviously have a go of them. Uh, a massive thank you to to Games Workshop for letting us try them. Um, thank you very and much. Uh, and yeah, just a, a hugely hugely enjoyable experience and uh, getting to paint uh, a yellow model, which was uh, <laughs> was not as not as concerning as I thought it was going Next to be. Next time so. we'll get you to do an actual fist, and it won't be related to uh, yeah. Mod Angels in some <laughs> yeah. way. We'll get yeah. you there. Yeah. I'll it's like rehab back. for uh like <laughs> for uh blood angels yeah exactly absolutely uh yeah well thanks again for coming for watching the show for all of you who watched it i hope you enjoyed it i hope you if, if, you know you have a go at these uh these new awesome paints and uh yeah just experiment and have some fun with them don't be afraid to try something new
Yeah, exactly. Great note to end it on. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll Thanks, see you guys. on the next one. Bye.